Descriptions, confirmed. Describing things, confirmed. Armor abilities, there's a lot of them. Confirmed. Ultimate Halo. Hey guys, Kenny here from Ultimate Halo, and I currently am a little sick, so forgive my voice for that. Uh, yeah, anyways, Wang Time's on vacation, probably heading to Russia to play Halo Online, so in the meantime, I'll be doing the confirming for now. And let me be clear, I am not part of the news team, I am just a Spartan Ninja Warrior guy, but we've been hella fucking busy with so much news lately, I think we had three or four uploads yesterday, and our Skype chat's been exploding. So let's get to it. News! First off, armor customization confirmed! So recently one of our Ultimate Halo team members did some digging in the source code for Halo Online's website, and he found a bunch of descriptions for different weapon variants, armor variants, and armor abilities. And there are a lot of these. So we can be pretty sure that most of the things that have descriptions in this source code will likely be making their way into the Halo Online beta, or maybe even into the final Halo Online game. So guys, I am turning on the fasten seatbelt sign because this is going to be a long video. Buckle up, grab some popcorn because we have a lot of these descriptions. Side note, I'm probably going to mispronounce a lot of stuff. Go ahead and correct me in the comments below. Kicking it off with Air Assault. Based on a proven Ushaya armory design, Naftali hopes to leverage the Air Assault's all-around excellent performance and combat endurance to compete for the UNSC's lucrative Spartan Recruit Armor contract. Air Assault armor is a front-runner for the standard armor that future Spartans will be clad in. Tremor Tremor variant armor removes several layers of the Mjolnir's threat management and safety interlocks, allowing programmable grenades to be set to higher yields. Intended for defensive operations, Spartan training has tested Tremor's offensive utility. Pioneer Though further refinements are expected, Acheron Security has staked the reputation of its military sensors division on the Pioneer's advanced threat detection system. The Pioneer testbed is the first of a new series of post-war reconnaissance and combat expedition Mjolnir variants. Gunslinger The Gunslinger design is unusual in that it's being built around the requirements of UEG police forces with a tweaked SmartLink system to increase handgun accuracy. Gunslinger is testing the potential for Mjolnir technology in a broader market. Oracle More an integrated experiment than a fully realized Mjolnir variant, the Oracle is testing a host of improvements in energy recuperation and power distribution subsystems for eventual inclusion in a standalone tactical package. Oracle is a test platform for modular system upgrades planned for the final Gen 2 suits. Juggernaut The Juggernaut's design was thought lost during the fall of Reach. Recovered by a corporate scout team in 2553, the prototype helmets were paired with the Gen 2 prototype harness and shipped to Anvil Station for integration testing. Each Juggernaut helmet is dabbed with vitrified dirt from Reach as a reminder of what is at stake. That's interesting. Hoplite Initially designed as an alternative to the SPR armor used by Spartan 3 operatives, the notoriously secretive Watershed Group has unexpectedly revealed the Hoplite as a low-cost Milner variant optimized for pairing with UNSC pistols. Hoplite armor lacks the bells and whistles of most Milner variants, but it's easy to build and repair. This makes me think that the Hoplite variant will be a little bit cheaper than other armor. On with the list. Breaker The Breaker is a no-nonsense Milner variant, being marketed as a tactical supremacy design. With increased endurance in the field, battle-tested components, and compatibility with the full range of tactical packages now available, Lethbridge Industrial has entered this design into the Spartan Branch Armor Competition. Spectrum All business in design, the Spectrum-class Milner armor is designed to get up close and personal with Covenant forces inside their starships and destroy them using high explosive and pinpoint gunfire. Cascade is aggressively marketing potential variants of the Spectrum design to police and paramilitary forces. Collad Sounds like some noise you'd make when you sneeze or something. Not intended for mass production, the Karakula was designed and manufactured simply to demonstrate a new design for fast switching Mjolnir muscle fibers, which allow for a quick return to a combat posture after sprinting. Collad Chog was built by a secretive design group within Materials Group as a technology demonstrator. Void Dancer Hardened against the perils of exo-atmospheric operation and equipped with the latest threat assessment firmware, the Void Dancer is Acheron's entry for the ODST's generation after next armor upgrade competition. Costly and temperamental, the Void Danger is a risky gambit for Acheron in the UNSC's post-2552 procurement wars. Cyclops, a product of IMC's secretive IO design lab, small superconducting loops spaced throughout the Cyclops' subassemblies and a more powerful fusion power pack give a substantial edge in fights that make use of tactical packages. A stripped-down version of Cyclops' power system is being tested for use as a backpack-carried energy source for UNSC weapons. 
Commando Though it has the rights to the design of Chalbis Defense Solutions' original Mark V armor, Nefli has adopted the Commando name for a new design fitted with high-capacity energy banks for extended tactical package usage. Marketed on the excellent reputation of the original Commando, the new design has yet to prove itself. Omni A surprisingly effective composite of other Acheron security designs, the Omni is currently the company's cutting-edge Mjolnir suit and one of the few able to effectively use Material Group's Gen 2 Armor Prototype Sensor Suite. Petabytes of Mjolnir combat data have been carefully sifted and analyzed by Acheron researchers to inform the Omni's design. Reaper Consisted an early work in progress by Hannibal's design team, the Reaper class armor still requires substantial refactoring of its interface system and stabilization of the tactical pack power feeds. Even this early version has drawn considerable praise from the testers at Anvil Station. Widowmaker High Threat Dynamic Combat Actuation, say that five times fast, is the Widowmaker's raison d'etre. With hardwired response protocols and quick-release mag clamps, the operator can quickly assess the situation and use the most appropriate weapon in hand. Testers at Anvil Station have noted the Widowmaker seems best suited for operation in human built-up areas. Venator Venator is Lethbridge Industrial's flagship Gen 2 prototype, incorporating high-performance power systems and hardwired CQB protocols. Apex Predator of the advanced Milner prototypes being tested at Anvil Station. Mermillion Taking form-defining function to an extreme, RKD's Mermillion class armor optimizes combat flexibility by using best-in-class tactical package components that require less power to charge. Rumors persist among Anvil Station personnel of Mermillion units fitted with hard light shields. Scepter Though capable of efficiently utilizing the new modular tactical package system, Lethbridge has also modified several Scepter suits to use the alternative plug-in upgrade system championed by Materials Group. The Scepter belongs to a new family of Mjolnir-based armor systems. Renegade Obstentially a strategic reconnaissance variant, users have noticed the Renegade sensor suite is calibrated specifically to track other Mjolnir suits, particularly those featuring emissions cloaking. Oni seems particularly interested in the tester's combat performance against other Spartans. Flunzer the Flunzer design is so new that final fabrication took place on Anvil Station itself, conveniently bypassing several testing protocols in the process. It remains to be seen how stable the suit's new low-power muscle fiber system is, as the first prototype burned itself out after a single War Games match. Though its running endurance is top class, concerns remain about the Flunzer's viability in the field. Inquisitor Inquisitor class armor does not utilize a fusion reactor, instead relying on an intact Forerunner Sentinel power cell. This allows for incredible flexibility in reallocating power to critical tactical packages. Custom-built Mjolnir frame with salvage forerunner supply. Rampart The Rampart armor system is one of several armor system prototypes from Materials Group, which are tailored for operation in built-up areas, such as urban areas and space habitats. The Rampart is particularly well-suited for hunter-killer operations in cramped arcologies. High threat combat actuation in urban environments is assumed to be the default battleground for Spartan 4 graduates. Infiltrator Infiltrator class armor is a new class of Mjolnir armor, created to subvert and penetrate security systems at heavily fortified sites which require on-site taps. To facilitate this, the suit has a faster recovery period after evading enemy patrols and sensors with sprints. The tactical abilities of the Infiltrator will be tested at Anvil Station. The cyber intrusion protocols are undergoing review on New Carthage. Halberd Cloaked in secrecy, all users of the Halberd class armor must sign binding, non-disclosure agreements about its performance and the particulars of its new weapon maglock arrangement. Emerson guards the Halberd prototype suits with their own, heavily armored private security. Strider With its extended range sensors, the Strider was paired with prototype suits that lacked their full combat suite during the desperate defense of Concord in 2551. Now finalized, the suit is undergoing final testing at Anvil Station, closely related to the Venator class armor. So yes, as you can tell, there are a lot of armor variants, and we're not done reading these descriptions, there are a bunch more. We are now going to go on to the list of power-ups and armor abilities that are available in the game. We're not quite sure how these will work exactly in Halo Online, but I can once again tell you there are a lot of them. So go ahead and post in the comments which one you think is your favorite. Here we go. Active Camo Refracts light around the user to make them partially invisible for a limited period of time. Power Drain Deploys EMP that disables energy shields and vehicles within its area of effect. Radar Jammer Scrambles enemy motion sensors by introducing false targets. Flare Blinds enemies by overloading optics with a multi-spectral pulse. Trip Mine Proximity Mine commonly used to secure routes. Forced Reload Instant Reload at the cost of losing remaining rounds in magazine. This is one of the ones where I'm not quite sure how it works like do you just snap your fingers or something and like does it reload 
I, I don't get it. Tank mode. Heightened resistance to incoming damage at the expense of user's visual focus. Bombing run. Multiple grenades are thrown in a single volley. Lightning strike. Adjustments to specific motor governors to increase the speed of melee attacks. Scrambler. Activation inhibits the use of consumable battle enhancements by other operators. Weapon Jammer Releases signal that interferes with weapon control systems, preventing them from being used. This one seems pretty interesting to me. Like, if you if you use this, does that mean like you have to use your fist or something? Or I, I don't get it. Vehicle Camo Activates refractive camouflage system, making the user's vehicle temporarily invisible. Bubble Shield Generates a spherical shield that is impervious to most weapon fire, though allows individuals to pass through. Regeneration Field Accelerate shield regeneration within a specific area of effect. Seen this one in Halo Reach. And this one from Halo 4, Auto Sentry. Automatic Sentry Turret which fires from a fixed position. Deployable Cover Activates a small energy shield emplacement that blocks incoming weapon fire but allows return fire. Concussive Blast Generates a local shockwave that forces enemies away. Shockwave Creates a shockwave that destroys projectiles, grenades, and equipment. Holographic Decoy Produces a holographic decoy to deceive enemies during combat. Reflective Shield Generates a shielding effect that counters melee attacks by redirecting the damage back at the enemy. Sort of like a bitch left. Roadblock Creates a shield around the player that damages vehicles, but immobilizes the player for a few seconds. Energy Reserves Enhanced energy reserves allow more frequent sprinting. Ammo Pack Player deploys a pack that refills ammunition. Grenade Pack Allows for more grenades to be carried by way of additional attachment points. Revenge Shield Max shields are increased when user dies without scoring. Simulation Hack User can respawn faster by exploiting a bug in the war game simulation. Thus, I refute thee. Activates a plasma grenade upon death as a final act of revenge. This is pretty much martyrdom from Call of Duty, and this is one of the ones I'm really not sure that I can say I feel good about. Vehicle Shield Increased shield and energy regeneration for users and passengers with inside any vehicle. Awareness Smart Link upgrade that retains motion sensor display while zoomed in with a weapon. Tactical Efficiency All of the user's tactical packages recharge faster. Nemesis Enable Nemesis slash Avenger mechanics. I'm not sure what this one is. I think because it says Avenger Mechanics, this might be where if you kill someone that kills your teammate, you might get some kind of bonus or power up or something, I'm not sure. Sprint Recovery The grammar on this one is pretty bad. User can shoot quickly aim after completing a sprint. What? Ejector Seat User is automatically ejected from a vehicle before its destruction. Visor Utilizing advanced Forerunner technology, the user can see through walls and other hard surfaces. Grenade Indicator Passive sensors warn users of incoming grenades. Now this one's pretty interesting to me because in pretty much every Halo game, we've always had that small little arrow that pops up on your HUD when there's a grenade about to blow up nearby you. So I'm not sure if this means that that won't be a default feature anymore and that it might be something that you'll have to equip with an armor ability. I can't say I like that one very much. Next up is Vehicle Gyroscope. Counterbalance system automatically restores vehicle to its proper orientation if overturned. Stamina boost. Increased stamina allows for longer sprints. Reflex booster. Increased aim recovery after sprint and faster reload speed. Battery charger. Spawn with an additional energy cell. Advanced motion tracker. Increased radar range and sensitivity. Backup power cell as an additional energy cell. Advanced power plant. Increased energy regeneration rate. And finally, advanced sensors. Radar is displayed while zoomed in and HUD displays nearby grenades. So there are a lot of interesting little things suggested in this list of armor abilities. Things like energy cells and regeneration rates and there's just a lot going on here. We're not quite sure what it all means, but again, these are just descriptions from the source code of Halo Online's website, so we don't know if all of these things will be making their way into the Halo Online beta. And now for the last part of this video, we have weapon descriptions. Weapons will be having their own variants just like the armor for Halo Online, and each one of these variants looks like it'll have their own perk when it's equipped. So from what we've seen in the trailer and judging by these descriptions, there will be six variants for all the primary weapons. So let's get right into these descriptions. Here we go. Starting off with the Assault Rifle. The MAG Assault Rifle variant has an extended magazine capacity for protracted firefight scenarios. And then we have DMG Assault Rifle, which I think is Damage Assault Rifle. Redesigned barrel provides higher damage than standard variant. Then we have ROF. Improved ammunition feed and receiver allows higher rate of fire during combat. And we have SNP. Match grade barrel and scope allows more precise shots over longer distances. Then we have ACC, which I believe is Accuracy. 
Recoil dampeners reduce spread and improve accuracy during combat. And finally we have Advanced Assault Rifle 2.0, which is like the balanced version which boosts all aspects of the weapon. Now on to the Battle Rifle, again with 6 options just like the Assault Rifle. It has ROF, which is Rate of Fire, ACC, which is Accuracy, Mag, which is Magazine, DMG, which is Damage, SNP, which is Snipe, and ADV, which is Advanced Battle Rifle 2.0. The description for these in that same order is improves ammunition feed and receiver allows higher rate of fire during combat, fires a 2 round burst with improved accuracy, fires a 5 round burst coupled with an increased magazine capacity, designed for close to medium range combat, allows increased damage at the expense of a scope, designed for long range combat, advanced smart link system provides higher magnification while zoomed in and improved effective range. Extensively redesigned battle rifle that improves upon every characteristic of the original. Then we have the DMR with pretty much the same variant options as the battle rifle. Extended magazine capacity for protracted firefight scenarios. Recoil dampeners reduce kick and improves accuracy during combat. Lighter variant with high refire rate and smaller magazine capacity. Designed for close to medium range combat. Allows increased damage at the expense of a scope. Designed for long range combat, advanced smart link system provides higher magnification while zoomed in and improved effective range. Extensively redesigned DMR that improves upon every characteristic of the original. Then we have the SMG which has the rate of fire, accuracy, sniper, damage, magazine, and advanced variants. The description for these variants are in that same order, improved ammunition feed and receiver allows higher rate of fire during combat. Recoil dampeners improve accuracy, includes extended magazine capacity for protracted firefight scenarios. More accurate shots and a higher effective range using controlled burst. Redesigned barrel provides higher damage than the standard variant. Special operations variant features an integral suppressor and increased magazine capacity. And finally, fully redesigned SMG that improves upon every characteristic of the original. Now on to the plasma rifle which has pretty much the same variants as the SMG. We have the damaged plasma rifle which is the variant favored by the brutes, modified to fire overcharged plasma bolts. The rate of fire plasma rifle, redesigned plasma culminator for increased rate of fire. Then we have accuracy plasma rifle. Upgraded plasma compression system reduces scatter of long range shots, improving overall aiming precision. Then we have the governed plasma rifle which is GOV. Rate of fire is automatically governed to maximize the time before overheating. Then we have Sniper Plasma Rifle, Upgraded Dual Plasma Culminator and Tracking System, which improves projectile speed and effective range. Then finally we have Advanced Plasma Rifle 2.0, which says fully redesigned plasma rifle that improves upon every characteristic of the original. And rounding out the primary weapons, we have the Covenant Carbine. A lot of these variants with the Carbine really change the way the Carbine works. A majority of these variants are pretty similar to the DMR and the Battle Rifle, but we also have variants like the Governed version, which we saw in the Plasma Rifle. So the Rate of Fire version of the Carbine says, Covenant Carbine redesigned for automatic fire. This is a pretty big change to the Carbine. Then we have Govern Covenant Carbine. Covenant Carbine that uses battery instead of cartridges. This one's pretty interesting as well. Then we have Sniper Covenant Carbine. Covenant Carbine with improved scope and higher effective range. Then we have Damage Covenant Carbine. Covenant Carbine with modified firing system that allows it to fire several projectiles per shot. Then we have Accuracy Covenant Carbine. The redesigned barrel and compensator of this Covenant Carbine improves its accuracy. And finally, Advanced Covenant Carbine 2.0. Fully redesigned Covenant Carbine that improves upon every characteristic of the original. And before we get to a couple of the secondary weapons, I just want to point out that there is something in this list for the Needle Rifle, but it only says Needle Rifle Test. Yeah. Anyways, on to the secondary weapons now. It's looking like the secondary weapons are only going to have three different variants compared to the primary weapon 6. The Magnum has Rate of Fire Magnum, Damage Magnum, and Advanced Magnum 2.0. The description for the Rate of Fire Magnum says Upgraded Rate of Fire and Increased Accuracy due to 2 times Magnification Smart Link Sighting System. Then the Damage Magnum says Redesigned Barrel provides higher damage than the standard variant. And finally, Advanced Magnum 2.0, Fully Redesigned Magnum that improves upon every characteristic of the original, includes 2 times Magnification Smart Link Sighting System. Then the Mauler is kinda interesting, it has Accuracy, Rate of Fire, and Advanced. Bayonet removed to include a heavier barrel with improved accuracy. Redesigned to support fully automatic fire. Bayonet removed to offset the increased weight. And lastly, fully redesigned Mauler that improves upon every characteristic of the original. And last but not least, we have the tried and true plasma pistol with rate of fire, damage, and advanced. Fast discharge energy coils allow rapid overcharging and an increased rate of fire. Experimental plasma generation system with a slower refire time but more damage per energy bolt. Fully redesigned plasma pistol that improves upon every characteristic of the original.
So holy fuck, there's a lot of descriptions to read, and there is a lot of customization. So let us know in the comments, do you think this is too much customization? And also, how the fuck do you feel about this coming to only Russia? I mean, it's Russia. Nothing against the Russians, please don't nuke me, Vladimir Putin. But come on, I want to play it too. And I'm still hoping the fact that this is apparently a Russian exclusive quote unquote game is an April Fool's joke. No one on the Ultimate Halo team believes me. So please post a comment below and support me because no one believes me. And I have been saying since this was first announced that this is probably an April Fool's joke. And if I'm wrong, I'll eat my words, but whatever. We're working extremely hard to bring you guys up to speed with the latest news that we're getting right now. Also, be sure to head on over to ultimatehalo.net where our sexy writing team has awesome blogs and stuff for you to check out, ya nerds. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully the next time that I'm back with a video, it'll be the first episode of Spartan Ninja Warriors Season 2. So once again, guys, my name is Kenny, and I'll see you guys next time right here on Ultimate Halo. Your home for Halo. Kerr. Subscribe now for more unfreaking believable Halo content.